What's going on everybody? So here we are, it's investigation time again. Uh, so tonight we are going to be doing the Pete Spence House here in uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, now tonight's actually a special one. Uh, if you guys don't know, it's January 16th, 2022. And tonight is the two year anniversary of me launching Wild Night Paranormal. So I wanted to celebrate it with doing an investigation and we got a good one. Uh, so Pete Spence House in Tombstone, uh, we're actually a few hours away still from getting over there. I'm kind of running around doing some uh, last minute stuff before heading over there. I already got the equipment loaded, going to be getting over there and setting everything up. Uh, one thing uh, I wanted to talk about is no, tonight, uh, I actually will not be going in alone on this investigation. Uh, I do have some people that will be joining me for it. Uh, that will be helping me out and I think we're just gonna have a really good night we are actually gonna be staying in the house for the night so this is gonna be an uh, an overnight investigation uh, we got a lot of history to talk about we got a lot to do um, there's gonna be uh, we're gonna do all kinds of EVP sessions spirit box sessions I'm coming in with some new equipment for this investigation that I just recently acquired as well uh, so that's gonna be a lot of fun uh, so one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of experimenting. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be coming in with some new equipment, so we're going to be experimenting with some new stuff um, that I kn I've known about. I've been wanting to grab some of this stuff. I finally got some. I've never really had a chance to use any of it. And I figured, what a better night to do it. Two-year anniversary uh, for Wild Night Paranormal, Pete Spence House right here in Tombstone. So we're going to have uh, we're going to make it happen and have a really good time with it. Uh, so. One thing I'm going to be doing as well is there's going to be some extra content in this video. Well, it won't be in this video uh, for you guys over on Patreon. So we're going to be doing some little bit of extra stuff at the Pete Spence house tonight that, uh, like I said, won't be in this video. Uh, you'll be able to catch that over on Patreon. So if you guys uh, don't currently follow me over on Patreon, consider maybe going over there and supporting me so you can see that uh, extra content. Uh, so I'm actually just, like I said, I'm running around doing some last minute stuff for tonight's investigation. And kind of just getting back into town right now. Uh, I'm going to stop into town. I'm going to grab some lunch, go talk with some of the locals, and, and uh, meet up with the with the guys that are going to be coming in with me tonight for this investigation. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I really hope uh, you guys are going to enjoy what you see. We're really looking forward to tonight. I said, this is a special night for me, guys. Uh, two year anniversary since I officially launched and, and announced Wild Night Paranormal. So getting to celebrate it with an awesome investigation. We're going to be at the Pete Spence house all night. Uh, got some, like I said, got some history to go over. Um, so we're gonna get. To, I'm gonna get on with the rest of the day. We got about five hours before we're gonna be over there. Uh, so I'm gonna go um, continue finishing what I've got going on. Like I said, I'm just getting back into town right now. So uh, yeah. So Pete Spence house tonight, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys over there in a little bit. guys so uh here we are just arrived over here at the uh Pete Spence house here in Tombstone Arizona um gonna be going in here in a little bit so kind of want to give you a little walk around to the front of the place so uh probably gonna be getting in there probably about the next 20 minutes gonna start getting the equipment out of the van and start getting it set up and then we're gonna be uh talking to the owner a little bit uh inside because she's had some experiences here herself and she wants to share those with us so uh, really looking forward to that um, But anyway, I mean here we are guys Pete Spence house uh, two-year anniversary or wild night paranormal I think we're gonna have a really good night tonight um, Like I said, I'm bringing a few people in on this with me. I got some new people coming in with me uh, And it's gonna be really fun with them So we're gonna go ahead and start getting the van unloaded and we're gonna get the equipment inside the house And we're gonna start setting it up and uh, we'll see you guys inside in a little bit Alright, so we're getting ready to head into the uh, Pete Spence house for the very first time. I've actually never, I haven't set foot in here yet. So uh, let's go ahead and head on in and see what we find. We'll check the place out. Alright guys, we're doing our first, uh, our first walk through at the Pete Spence house. Like I said, this is my first time I've ever been in here. So this is where we're going to be staying the night tonight and doing our, uh, doing our investigation. So if you guys wondering who I am talking to behind the camera, I do have 
um, somebody who is working the investigation with me tonight. You will see him in a little bit, actually. Let's go ahead and walk through the other side. It's the first time I've ever been in here. Huh? Can you come out? That's storage. You can look. It's kind of messy. <laughs> That's the storage room, guys. Doing exactly what it's meant to do. <laughs> Storing everything. Get light on. Cooler, flower cooler. You know, cooler. Definitely think we can rule out getting a uh, rule out getting a cold spot in here tonight. <laughs> it's pretty cold in here, guys. All right. Okay, so we are, this is the backyard in the Pete Spence house, or I don't know if it's really the backyard, but I kind of just feel like I walked out the back door, so. So this is Tombstone's local flower shop, so you're going to see a lot of uh, statues and a lot of dec uh, decorative items and flowers, and <laughs> you're going to see them around. Um, so I'm just kind of just walking around doing my first walkthrough of the, uh, the property. Uh, I'm actually going to, in a little bit here, I'm going to be doing, um, we're going to talk with the owner here soon. Uh, she's had some experiences in the house, uh, in this in this house. So uh, we're going to go ahead and sit down with her and listen to the uh, experiences she's, uh, she's had. And then after that, we're probably going to go, I'm going to conduct an uh, EMF sweep and probably an RF sweep of the house as well, um, just to make sure there's no uh, anywhere where it's leaked because this is a very old house. Um, Make sure that we're not getting any uh, faulty wiring, any electrical, high spikes in electrical or EMF pumping in through the house. Um, it's just going to give me a better uh, idea of where to where to set up equipment, areas to watch out for. Because, uh, like I said, it, it, it's an old house. I mean, it's the Pete Spence house. It's been here, it's been here since the 1880s. So there could be some old wiring in the house that might cause a lot of uh, uh, EMF to be spilled into the atmosphere, which can actually cause uh, hallucinations and it can you know it can cause a lot of it can cause you to think you're seeing things or hearing things when there's really nothing there so that's what i'm going to do the emf emf sweep for um like i said i'm probably i'm going to do the interview with uh with the owner which you're going to see here next and then after that we're going to go through and do that emf sweep and uh right now i'm going to go ahead and get back inside um we're going to start uh, setting everything up uh like i said this was just my first initial walk through of the house and I wanted to kind of see what I was working with, the, the area I'm working with. So we're gonna go ahead and head back in right now and we'll see you guys here in a bit. There's somebody in here that was just messing with this device on the table while we're in there setting up. You go ahead and touch it again. you please touch this device on the table? Okay, so I don't know exactly. Uh, we're in the other room setting up, and I have the REM pod sitting here on the table as we're in the other room setting up. And I didn't hear it, but uh, there's a couple of us over here that are setting some equipment up in the other room, and they heard the REM pod go off. I didn't hear it. So... I figured I'd come in here real quick and see if any, anything's trying to uh, contact with us, trying to communicate with us while we're setting up. So, because we've got a lot of equipment we brought in and they might be wanting to know, trying to figure out what's going on. So, like I said, I didn't hear it go off. They did, or one of them did, and, oh, it just beeped again. I think they're trying to communicate with us right now. If that's you, cut, if there's somebody touching that device, can you touch that? And can you touch the antenna and make those other lights go off on that device? Can you grab that? Can you grab that that device on the table? It's flashing like crazy right now. Can you go ahead and grab that device for me?
I left this out for you. This is this is for you to, to uh, mess around with. We're going to be in here all night, so we're going to be bringing out some other stuff for you to uh, communicate with us. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this device on the table. If you want to go ahead and keep messing with it while we're setting up, you can you feel free to, feel free to do so. That's what it's out for. But if you could touch it, if you could go ahead and touch it like this and make see how you make all those lights go off. If you could do that. Can you go ahead and touch that for me? Make all those lights go off? Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna be leaving this device out while we're setting up. Uh, we got a lot to do tonight. We're still just in, in the other room getting set up right now. It's kind of a mess and we're trying to make, a, uh, make sense of it all. So I'm gonna be leaving this uh, REM pod going on the table here while we're in the other room setting up. And uh, we're not too far, we're literally just right in the next room. So if it goes off again, we're gonna go ahead and uh, come in here and, and check it out and see what's going on. But we got a lot to get going on, so I need to get in there and start getting everything set up. Uh, we, we've got a lot to set up right now, so we'll be back here in a bit. All right, guys, so we're in, here inside the Pete Spence house, and I'm here with the owner, Karen, and uh, we want to. Tr I'm going to ask her and see uh, any experiences she's had in the house, because you've, you've had a few, right? I have. I have had a few. So have um, Bridget and Krista and a few of the other workers have as well. Okay. Um, so I want to make, want to make a point right now that we normally during the interview, I don't have any equipment set up on the tables. I have the REM pod set up right now because as we were in here setting up equipment in the next room, we kept the REM pod kept getting triggered. Um, and I actually got one intelligent response where I, uh, it was going off and I asked whoever it was that was messing with it to stop messing with it. And as soon as they, as soon as I said that it shut off. So that's why I have this sitting here because I feel like uh, maybe we might talk about some things that might uh, stir up some energy with them and they might want to talk with us or maybe say, hey, you're not getting that right or maybe like, yeah, I did that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, REM pod going on the table while we, uh, while we do this interview right now. Um, so let's we'll start with what any experiences that you have had in here. One of them has been in my storage room back there and if you notice the shelves are pretty deep okay yeah I, so that's where i have my baskets and things have fallen off the shelf right after bridget and i have strained it up then several hours later it should not be falling off the shelf right it's like you flat, walk in there and it's on the ground it's on the ground okay yes. uh bridget one evening or one afternoon i should say was right here it was in the middle of summer very hot so we were trying to run some portable ac units so we would vent it out this door and she was trying to fix it because the door's open. She was trying to fix it to where we could keep the cool air in. And all of a sudden she hears, bitch. It was a very deep masculine voice. And she thought, well, maybe someone had walked up outside and she had just shut them out. So she undid all her stuff, looked outside, no one out there. Only other person in the building was Krista, her daughter, in the bar room. Uh, she heard a and she heard a male voice while she's she by the door and it said bitch and it, say bitch. wow okay so so one thing i've um i've done when when it comes to uh reading up on pete spence he wasn't the nicest guy um he in fact in this house uh there were some instances of domestic violence between him and his wife so the fact that maybe he um saw a woman in here and came up and said bitch you know just with his um with his past of you know, not being that nice of a guy towards women. Um, could be wrong, but uh, that sounds like something he would do. So, because if you guys don't um, realize, we're, we're not just, the main focus of this investigation is we're gonna be trying to get in, in touch with uh, Pete Spence, because this was his house uh, with during his days here in Tombstone. Um, I don't know if there's any other spirits here. I haven't heard any stories of any others. Um, I have gotten stories of people saying like they've been touched, poked, and. But that sounds like it sounds like we might be dealing with one, but I don't know. Maybe we're gonna. I think there's several. Couple. You think, think there's, there's several? A couple of children in here. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you're gonna do anything outside or not. Um, we probably will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another time, Krista was here, and Krista is my bonus daughter. She came out of the storage room, and I was standing in the doorway where my to go where I make my flower arrangements. Mm -hmm. Had my hands full. 
She turns around and looks at me, really funny, and asks me if I had just popped her on the butt. I had my hands full. Right. So, so <laughs> there's was, no way you There was have... no way. <laughs> right. And not to mention, I wouldn't have done that even anyway, even though she is my bonus daughter. <laughs> but still. <laughs> yeah, having your hands full, that's kind of a... Uh, yeah. It'd be kind of hard to slap someone's butt with, uh, with that going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, what else have you had? Um, a while back, one of the workers was here. I was gone. We had a, a customer come in. She had two children. And one of the little, uh, the little girl, it was a little girl and a little boy, little girl told my office worker, says, here, hold this. I'm going to go talk to the man. She comes straight through here and into the wedding room and sat down and was having a conversation. With the little girl? The, the little girl was having a conversation about, with someone. Oh, okay. Oh, and a man. Yeah. Okay. She said, I'm going to talk to the man. I'm actually going to write that down. In fact, speaking of, of which, I'm going to get to um, this room in just a second. All right, so speaking of, of that, um, I would, my next question is, this room back here, um, the altar room, where you have the altar set up, mm-hmm. um, you guys will be seeing it later on. There's a, there's a room that's right across from us where there is an altar because she does weddings here. Um, so has there been, besides the one you just told me, because when we came in, when we, I came in here for my first initial walkthrough, that room has a very different feeling to it. And um, while we were setting up, you actually brought it up that there that is that room's got a different feeling. And when we were when we were setting up, uh, as soon as you said that, I remember I popped up and looked at you guys and and said because um, we got somebody else with us here too. You guys will be seeing them later. We both felt this at the same time when we did the initial walkthrough. When we walked into this altar room, I'm talking about. We both just felt a very different kind of energy in this room. Uh, I think this room is actually going to be quite a focus point tonight, um, so that's why I'm, I'm bringing this up now with the question: like, is has there been like besides that one you were just saying? Has there been like anything else that's like mainly like happened in this room? As far as happening and things falling off, no, not in that room. Okay. But the the feeling that you get, yes, yeah. several people yeah. get it. As soon as um, soon as you brought it up in the other room, I popped up and I was like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Squirt, squirt. And then um, Athena's dog, um, which was Sophie. The dogs have a very, um, like they follow, they're following someone around. Okay. Sophie is an older dog and her main thing is that she just sleeps. She sleeps, that's it, just eats and sleeps. But the day that Athena brought her, she literally walked this whole place, just like she was following somebody and then went into this room and just sat down and just stared into the corner. And then she fell asleep, got up, walked around like she was looking, didn't find anybody, went and curled up in the corner again. In, in, the, in that room? In this room. Okay. Squirt does the same thing. She'll get up at times and she'll just act like she's following someone and I'll come in and follow her in here and she's just staring into the corner. Wow, okay. Yeah, because I think that room's gonna be a that's going to be a focus point tonight because just with that energy and now hearing that in this story you just told mm-hmm. me about the uh the little girl wanting to go uh talk to the man in there um so um speaking of that you brought up with me uh something about an attic in this place yes some friends of mine came in and they were doing some investigation and he actually in this particular one he would said that he was sitting in this room here okay he had his, the the room we're in or no, the the wedding room okay he was sitting in there he had um a person standing out here and then his wife was in the office room with me and he had earphones on earbuds listening to the what do you call it um yeah, spirit, spirit box, box okay. yes thank you he couldn't hear what we were asking but he would uh relay answers yeah we, we actually call that an estes session and we okay. will actually be doing one of those in here tonight nice so yeah all he kept saying was attic oh, check okay. the attic that's all he kept saying check the attic H- have you guys ever gone up in the attic of this place or? i have not there's there's the attic entrance oh it's there. literally right above me all right there's also an entrance <laughs> over there okay and there's an entrance right behind him in that room okay so there's you multiple notice how small those are 
Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> tiny. I can maybe just fit through there. I didn't realize it was right above me. Yeah. And also, um, someone came in here today, and I had just met them, never said anything else, but he says, what is it about the attic? Hmm. That's actually a, that's a pretty good question. I think I want to find out what is it with the it attic. It is. Okay. And, and also, we're hope, I'm hoping Pete will give us the real story if it's, you know, if things that they said about him is true. Right. Well, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm hoping that, because uh, we got a lot of, I got a lot of history, not a lot, but I've got uh, quite a bit of history to talk to, and we'll be getting to that here in a little bit. Um, but I want to thank you for telling us some stuff that's gone on here. It's actually going to help us a little bit. So, um, so anyway, guys, this is Karen. She owns the Pete Spence House, also known as Friendly Flowers, as her, this is her business. It's the local flower shop here in uh, Tombstone. And I've heard a lot of stories about this house. Um, we got some more we got to talk about here in a little bit. We got a little bit of history to go through, and then I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, the members of the crew that I'm going to have helping me out on this investigation tonight, because I'm finally doing one not by myself. So we'll catch you guys here in a little bit. And Karen, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, guys, so we're getting close to investigation time here at the Pete Spence house, and I wanted to go over a little bit of the, uh, the history of Pete Spence and, and this house. So I got quite a bit to cover, so I am going to be reading off of, uh, I've taken a bunch of notes, so I am going to be reading off this uh, paper. Uh, so let's get into it. So we are, uh, we're getting ready to get this investigation started uh, at the Pete Spence house. Um, I wanted to come on. Wanted to come out here and uh, actually talk to you guys about a little experience I kind of just had in the house, uh, personal to me. Um, I found it very weird. Uh, so I was doing the history on the house. I was I was doing the history uh, clip, and uh, I'll tell you guys, I, I've read the the history over and over, and and I'll tell you what, I was in there trying to read it, trying to do do the history on camera, and guys, I was really confused. It was almost like to me, it felt like something in there didn't want me to tell the story didn't want me to tell the history of the house um or the history of pete spence it was just really weird uh, my crew was in there they were listening to me and they even said like hey are you all right um which i'm fine it was just really weird because guys like i was i literally have the whole history down and i was just getting really confused like i was i was talking and then i would lose what i what i was saying uh, and I just couldn't figure out where I was in, in the story. So I just kind of kept repeating myself and finally I just sat there and, and, uh, I was just like, you know what? Turn the camera off. I can't do this right now. So like I said, guys, it was a very weird experience for me. It was personal for me. Um, I'm actually outside kind of taking a breather after that cause that just happened. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do the history, um, either later on. Or I might even, try, if, it ha if that happens again, then I'm, I'm probably going to do the history outside, the, the history clip, I'm probably going to do it outside of this house. Uh, because to me, uh, if you guys know uh, anything about me, I've talked about it, that I pick up on a lot of energies, and it's very weird for me to get confused like that. And it was just, it's just really odd. And like I said, I had to come outside and kind of take a breath, and, and we're about to get the investigation started. Like I said, I will be getting to the history. Uh, it will still be in the video, but I, I don't know if I'm going to film it, uh, the history clip at this house. It just like I said, it felt like something didn't want me to tell the history of the house or Pete Spence while I was in there. Um, so uh, it's very weird. I'm going to head back inside and we're going to get this investigation going right now. So I just really wanted to share that with you guys because I found it really, really strange. So let's head back in. All right. So what is going on, guys? So uh, as you can tell... I'm clearly not at the Pete Spence house. Um, I'm back in my studio here at home. Uh, the reason for that is, like I was saying, uh, it was really weird how um, how confused I was getting trying to do the history of the Pete Spence house and Pete Spence as well. Uh, I tried it a couple more times throughout the night, and guys, it just got worse. Um, I just I kept tripping over my words. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure out where I was in the in the point in history. Uh, so finally, after about the third or fourth try, I just said, you know what, I'm not even going to do this here. Uh, I'm just going to wait till I get till I get back home into my studio, which is where I'm at now. So what I want to do is um, I actually want to uh, go over the history that I do have that I've been wanting to go, that I wanted to go over while I was at the Pete Spence house. Um, fortunately, it just couldn't happen. Um, so I did change one thing. Uh, now that I've done the investigation and I have my own feeling and opinion on that house, 
Um, I did. I did have. In fact, I have it right here, guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you because this is. Um, this just kind of. It's like I said. I've already done the investigation. I'm home now, and I'm doing the history from home after. You know, post investigation. So, um, I literally had as far as the history of the Pete Spence and the Pete Spence house. Um, I literally had pages, just pages written out, guys. I, I've got about six pages here of history I was going to uh, going to read to you guys. Um, I've actually, like I said, now that I've done the investigation and had that whole uh, experience while I was there, um, I've changed this up a little bit. I'm actually not going to be reading all this. Um, I'm going to be doing a shorter uh, version of the history of the Pete Spence house for um, certain reasons, and which you'll see later on in the uh, in this investigation. So, with that being said, let's kind of I want to kind of talk to you guys about Pete Spence. Mainly, what I'm going to focus on uh, is his days here in Tombstone. I'm not really going to focus on um, like his past or where he went after. I mean, I'll mention a couple things. Uh, one thing I will say though, guys is uh, because I know I'm going to miss, I'm, I'm not going to talk about all the history of Pete Spence. Believe me, I've, I've done my research. And I know some of you guys will be like, hey, well, did you know this? Did you know that? Yes, I know. Um, I did my research. I'm just cutting this down. Like I said, I've for for my personal opinion on the Pete Spence house, which you guys are going to see later on in this, in this video, um, I'm cutting down the history for this. Because like I said, I'm home now. The investigation was a couple days ago. Um, I wasn't able to do the history at the house. And I'm now home doing it. So we are two day, about two days post uh, investigation now. So, uh, but what I what I want to want to say is, if you guys, anybody who's found your way onto this video, or anybody, any of you that don't know about Pete Spence, um, get get online and, and really research him. Research the history of Pete Spence and everything he did and what what happened here in Tombstone. Uh, it's actually really really good research and it's really good it's really good read to be honest. Um, I really enjoyed uh, doing all my research and reading on Pete Spence, uh, so I definitely should, I definitely uh, recommend you guys go and, and, and do that. Go uh, go Google Pete Spence and start doing some reading on him, because uh, like I said, I'm not going to touch really any of the, not a whole lot of the history of him. I know I'm, I'm going to leave a lot out, and uh, so, but that's that's mainly done also because. Um, I needed to cut this little history section down because this is going to be a long video, so I'm cutting it down for time, so as well. So with that, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of history about Pete Spence right now. All right, so when it comes to Pete Spence, actually, um, his birth name was Elliot Larkin Ferguson. So, and I mean, not really a lot is known about his youth. Uh, he was, uh, I believe, I think it was in. Um, 1874, really the beginnings of hearing anything about him, he was enlisted in the Texas Rangers. Uh, so, I mean, like I said, not really a whole lot is known about his youth. And now, come to his days in Tombstone is where he took on the name Pete Spence. Um, his days here in Tombstone, well, um, let me just say, guys, he really wasn't the nicest guy. <laughs> I mean, I, all, after all the research I've done... The guy, this guy was always in trouble. He was kind of, you know, he was not very nice. I mean, come on. I mean, let's show the picture of the guy. So take a look at this picture. I mean, now given it's rumored that this is the only picture of him in existence. So I don't know how true that is. Um, obviously, in this picture, it's a mug shot. He, he did some time, which we'll get into here in a minute. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know. Nobody really looks good in their mug shot. Everybody looks kind of nasty. So... Um, like I said, I don't know if the rumor is true. I don't know if this is really the only photo of him. Uh, I, you can Google his name and some other photos come up and I've seen some other videos of people kind of talking about how there's other photos of him and they kind of do comparisons and all that. Um, but I'm not going to do any of that. So like I said, if you guys want to check that out and if you guys actually can come up with any, uh, uh other photos of him and can prove their photos of him, I'd really like to see him actually. So... But back to uh, his days in Tombstone. So when he got here, he actually was affiliated with the Notorious Cowboys gang uh, that was very well known here in Tombstone. Uh, if you guys know any Tombstone history, um, you guys will know about him as well. Um, the whole thing between the Cowboys and the Earps and, and the whole Vendetta ride. Um, so uh, he ended up, when he got here, he ended up becoming friends with another well-known name in town and Cowboy, uh, Frank Stilwell. So him and Stilwell were always getting into trouble with each other. Uh, anytime there was, you know, anywhere between stagecoach robberies to just uh, 
stealing cattle. I mean, they anytime really that there something happened uh, along those lines, the the law always came looking for for Spence and Stillwell. So I mean, they were always in trouble with each other. But uh, so moving on, uh, one of the big things I want to talk about is his involvement and uh, yeah, his involvement with the assassination assassination of Morgan Earp. So, of course, you guys know the history of Tombstone. You know all about that whole situation. So, one big thing is um, it's been rumored that the actual plot uh, of the uh, plotting of the assassination of Morgan Earp was actually uh, done in the Pete Spence house, like actually inside the house. So, it gets rumored that that's where they plotted the assassination. Uh, so, uh, it, it goes into a whole a whole deal with that. Uh, if you look into the history, they talk about how. Uh, Pete Spence's wife actually heard, overheard him and some others plotting that that assassination in the house. And when Pete found out that his his wife had overheard it, uh, he you know he did the regular things that you know you would expect. He threatened her, threatened to harm her if she said anything. Which, after the whole assassination happened, um, she was actually called in to testify uh, against him, against Pete Spence. And give and back in those days, after the whole uh, the whole case, I mean, those days it was all it, the whole evidence and her whole testimony was actually just uh, called hearsay because back in those days, um, a wife could not testify against her husband. Get that, you know, like so, uh, th definitely different different back then than it is nowadays. So, um, yeah, so that whole the whole Morgan Earp thing that ended up leading to the whole vendetta ride and and actually what's funny is when. Uh, when the whole vendetta ride was going down, Pete Spence actually turned himself in because uh, he knew the Earps were coming after him. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, we're in this guy's house, you know, supposedly where they plotted the uh, um, assassination of Morgan Earp. So big, big part of history here in Tombstone. So, um, so like I said, I mean, his days in Tombstone, I mean, they, they were you know, violent, <laughs> you know, he, he was affiliated with the Cowboys and, and he lived in the house that, that we're investigating. And, and it's going to be interesting to see what we come up with. Um, so in 1883, he was actually in, he was a deputy sheriff in Georgetown, New Mexico. Uh, now this is where he, um, he ended up pistol whipping a man to death as he's a deputy sheriff. And that's actually where the mug shot that I just showed you uh, came from. That was when he was convicted to f five years in an Arizona uh, territorial penitentiary. And give this guy a, a five-year sentence for pistol whipping this man to death while he's a deputy sheriff. He's supposed to be upholding the law and he goes and pistol whips a man. Uh, so he gets five years and he's convicted and he's doing time in the penitentiary. And after just like 18 months, he actually ends up getting a full pardon from the uh, from the gov from the territorial governor, so he's set free uh, after after everything he's done. Like you know, you think like he had, you know, whether he actually had something to do with the the assassination of Morgan Earp or not, who knows? Because you know they ended up you know how that all went down. But the fact that then he after that he became a, a deputy sheriff or he pistol whipped a man to death and then you know he gets sentenced for it. But then like, he doesn't even you know he does just a little over a year. You know, when he gets out for it. Um, so after that, he actually ended up, uh, later on in life, he ended up in Globe, uh, Arizona, where he ran mule teams with actually a really good friend of his, which was a member of the Clanton family. And they ran mule teams for, for many years up there, up in Globe, uh, until eventually his, his friend um, from the Clanton family passed away. And at that point, Pete Spence ended up going back to his um, birth name of Elliot Larkin Ferguson, and he ended up marrying the uh, the widow of his friend, uh, where he where he eventually died in 1914. Now, like I said, guys, I've kind of cut this history short. There was a lot I wanted to to go into, but for time, I had to cut it down. And and like I said, given that uh, I'm out of the uh, the house now and doing the uh, history here back in my studio. Uh, kind of cutting it down, but um, so he, he eventually passed away in 1914 up there in Globe, Arizona, and they buried him next to his uh, his longtime friend that he spent the rest of his life with in uh, Globe. And get this, guys, they actually buried he's actually buried in an unmarked grave. Like he's next to his friend, but his grave is is remains unmarked. So I don't know maybe if that's karma catching up to him in the end. 
uh, for all the bad stuff he done he did and, and got away with. You know, he just eventually he just gets to sit in a grave that doesn't get marked. So I don't know. Anyway, we're we're in his house. You know, this this investigation's in his house, and and like I said, well maybe maybe he's in there. You know, maybe he's not. Um, we'll we'll be seeing through the investigation everything we catch and and I don't know. Um, so yeah, the Pete Spence house. Um, one thing, uh, actually, I wanted to throw one more thing in there. So if anybody has any old photos, I can find like some really old photos of the Pete Spence house. This picture right here, um, is the oldest photo I can find of it. Um, I, I looked around and I looked for hours trying to find old photos of the Pete Spence house, um, back in its day when, when he lived there, when Pete Spence lived there. And this was the oldest photo I was able to come across. So if any of you have like any uh, old photos, that, you know, even older than this one, uh, maybe if, if there's a photo, photos of it being built, I think that would be awesome. Um, if you guys can send those over to me, because I would really like to see them. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, Pete Spence House, um, we're going to see uh, how this investigation goes, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and I know we're going to. That's the history of Pete Spence. Like I said, I've shortened it. Like, I know, trust me, I had pages and pages that I wanted to uh, to read off for you guys. And sorry, my, my camera keeps uh, blurring out on me. I apologize for that. Um, I don't know what's going on with it right now. But uh, so, like I said, I know there's a lot of history that I left out. Trust me, I know. Uh, I, know you, I know I'm probably going to get uh, people telling me, hey, do you know about this? And and I probably do because I researched Pete Spence for hours and hours. And like I said, for, for time, this is going to be a very long video. So I wanted to cut the history down a little bit. Uh, but if you guys want to send me those uh, comments anyway about, hey, did you hear about this? Please do. Because maybe I maybe there's something I don't know. And I would really uh, like to continue to, uh, to know about Pete Spence and even more. So if you guys want to send me any of that, please do. Um, so anyway, with that being said, let's get this uh, let's get this investigation rolling, guys, and uh, we'll see what we find. What's going on, everybody? So we are here at the Pete Spence House, getting ready to get this investigation started. And I wanted to introduce you to my team tonight. Um, right here, I actually have my really good friend Tony T. A lot of you might actually know him from town. We're always walking around, having a good time. Works at the works at Doc Holiday Saloon, as do I. Um, right here, I actually have I have Cat which you guys know Kat as actually my mother. And for those of you that don't know, this is my mother. So she's gonna be helping out with this investigation tonight. Um, and right here, of course, you're not gonna see this man very much. He's behind the camera, but still wanted you to see his, uh, his face. This is Taco. So some of you in town know him as well. So like I said, this is actually a very special night. It's the two year anniversary for Wild Night Paranormal. And we're doing the Pete Spence house. We are gonna be here all night and Finally, guys, I'm not doing one alone. So I have a team with me tonight. So I think we're gonna catch. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna catch a lot. Um, so we're really looking forward to this one. Now, before we get into it, there is actually um, <clears throat> my uh, my brother Tony T right here. This is actually his very first investigation that he's ever done. Uh, so I'm actually very happy to. Uh, Numero uno. Number one. Very happy to have you with us on this one. This is this is gonna be fun. Oh, well, I'm ready. So. Another thing about Tony as well that I wanted to uh, kind of just bring up real quick is you brought this up with me that your family actually has some history here. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you would like to tell us what that history is. So I'm not really part of that history, but my grandparents and my aunt, my mom's oldest sister, used to live here for a couple years uh, right around the time my family got here into Tombstone. I don't know anything paranormal about those days, but I do have history with my family here, so I thought it would be super cool to have my first paranormal investigation be here in this house. And I'm glad you're here. Now, what, a lot of you guys don't realize, because we didn't catch uh, some of this on camera, when me and Tony, Tony's actually been with me since I got here earlier. When we first uh, did our very first initial walkthrough in the house, we had not been in the house before. And when we walked in, we started having experiences immediately. Um, everything from there is a room in this house that me and him we walked in at the same time and we both just looked at each other and we we're like this room's different so I think we're actually gonna catch a lot and the fact that he has your family has history here um, I think they're probably gonna try actually connecting with you a little bit yeah so I as I think they, they actually have uh, somewhat already so like I said guys this is gonna be a very good night we have a lot to do uh, it's gonna be a very long night 
So a couple of us will be staying in the house uh, overnight. So we're going to get into this investigation, and we will see you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys, so we're going to start with uh, doing an EMF sweep of the house. Um, what this is is we're going to go through and check to see, because this is an old house, and it, does, it could have some old wiring. Um, the owner did tell me that the wiring is new here, but I still want to start with uh, doing this EMF sweep in the house is to focus on if there's any electrical leaking into the atmosphere, which can cause hallucinations if you get enough amount of it leaking in. Um, so what we're actually going to start with is we're going to do the EMF uh, sweep and then we're also going to do an RF sweep either this checks for any radio uh, frequencies to see if there's anything that's putting off any kind of, anything that could really mess with any of the equipment I'm gonna find out and catch it on here if there's anything that could possibly be in here so we're gonna go around uh, the house now and we're gonna do a, a sweep uh, do the EMS sweep and the RF sweep right now This is actually one of our this is one of our DVR cameras and it's actually turned off right now. So you can see it's not putting off any kind of any kind of signal or any kind of uh, static or EMF. What you do want to check are the any of the light switches, any of the wiring, which the, the owner said that the wiring's all been pretty insulated in here, so. So I'd say the wiring so far in this house is pretty insulated. All right, so we're actually going to, I'm going to continue this EMF sweep. We're going to be in the stock room right now. There is some, uh, some stuff back here that could be putting off some uh, EMF. So we're going to go ahead and check it out real quick. So I didn't catch any um, unusual spikes on the EMF meter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that the uh, the wiring's pretty uh, pretty solid in this house. We're not getting I didn't get any any major spikes whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go through and now do my RF sweep of the house. Um, I'm just going to check for any radio frequencies. There is one room that we are not doing because it is where nerve center is set up and it's where um, the businesses computers are all set up. So that that can throw off a lot of uh, a lot of false readings so I'm not that's a room we're not doing so there's gonna be a whole part of this uh, house that we're you're not gonna see because we're kind of skipping that because there's just a lot of uh, elect electrical stuff going on in there so um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue now I'm gonna go over to the other side of the house where I started with the EMF and I'm gonna go uh, do the RF sweep now Hmm. Scrooge McDuck. This 
this is weird because this is where we keep seeing uh -huh. a lot of stuff is going on here. Uh, we see like waving from the camera on the camera. I'm not getting anything now. Mm -hmm. That whole reading I'm getting, I'm not getting it anymore. Not whatsoever. That's really that's really strange. We were catching an RF uh, RF uh, reading over here. I've been trying to find it for a couple minutes, and now all of a sudden, guys, if you look, I'm not catching anything. It was spiking up to about half. Uh, so it was making me think there was maybe a camera back here or, or some kind of radio or something that was putting off a signal, but you know, Guys, I'm not catching anything. I, you can see it's not even spiking up whatsoever So I think we're just gonna go ahead and move on. I think that was that was kind of weird I don't know why Aha! There we go. What is that? It's not what I was catching over there. It's an oil burner. Oh. Yep, there we go. I was wondering why it was spiking right here. But that does, I don't know what we caught over there though. Is there something behind that? That one? There it goes again. Behind this. I don't know why that would be putting off any kind of signal. Right, this is plastic. And now, yeah. Dude, that's weird. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it has, you know, like in stores when they put the little security tag in it. Oh, um, yeah, can't use it. I don't see it. I don't see one, though. Found it. <laughs> what is it? So we got the telephone. It looks like the router's right here too. There it is. Okay. I'm sure we're gonna pick up quite a bit in here. We got a microwave and all kinds of electrical in here, so. So one thing we are going to make note of is that this is the cooler for the flower shop. This is where they have all their flowers stored. So they are running a cooling unit in there. That's probably why we're getting the spike that we're getting from around this door, um, which is fine because we're not really going to be doing a whole lot in this part of the house. But I uh, just kind of want to get it out of the way and check it. So you can see we're spiking pretty good. And the cooler is currently running right now. So that's probably where we're catching this, uh, this reading from. All right, guys, so we went ahead and we've completed uh, 
Done. We've completed the EMF sweep and the RF sweep. Um, there's a couple a uh, couple points in the house that we're gonna that we're taking focus uh, or notice of, and we're gonna make sure that we uh, avoid using any of our uh, EMF or static equipment uh, around. We've got a couple places in the back. Um, we're in the room where I caught the most uh, EMF and uh, RF uh, readings. But there's like I said, there's also a cooler back here where they're running their flower or they're storing their flowers. So we're not really gonna be investigating this room at all. This We'll probably do a couple things in here, but this room, this part of the house really isn't uh, our main focus. We're, we're focusing more on the, the original part of the house. So um, with that, uh, with our, our EMF and our RF uh, scans done, let's move on and get this, uh, get for moving on further into the investigation. What's going on guys? So I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I want to take a little break for a second and uh, kind of explain to you what the next part, what's going to be happening next. Um, unfortunately, we one of our flash drives was destroyed in the process of uh, making this video, so we lost some of the clips from this investigation. And uh, so I'm going to be kind of checking in with you guys throughout this video a couple more times to to explain what's going on before we cut into those clips. Unfortunately, it was just a uh, it was an unfortunate event that we uh, that flash drive got destroyed. But luckily, we didn't lose any uh, any major footage, so that that's the good part of that. So, um, okay, so in this clip that's about to happen, um, I am going to be using for the very first time uh, my SB11 Spirit Box um, to, to start this investigation. This, was, this is the first time, uh, first investigation that I have used one of these. Um, I have one of my investigations that I've used one of these. I, have, I do have experience using the SB11. Uh, I've just never owned one until now. So this is actually... The very first time, what's about to happen now is the very first time I have used the SB11 in one of my own investigations. So, uh, without with that being said, uh, let's get back uh, to the investigation. Like I said, I'm going to be popping in a couple more times to uh, explain some stuff to you guys, and I hope you guys are enjoying the investigation so far. Let's get back into it. We're not here to hurt you. We're here to communicate with you. Uh, we would really like you if you would come through and talk with us. Uh, we are very interested to hear what you have to say. Like I said, we are not here to hurt you in any way. We are here just to communicate with you. I am holding a device in my hand right now that you can use to speak with us. And we really appreciate it if you can come through. Let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, if there's anybody in this house that would like to speak with us, you can do so now. I just introduced you to us. Can you say any one of our names? Can you tell us your name? Did I say P? It just sounded like it said P. It sounded like it said P, like a long, I guess it went P. Yes? Uh, it sounded like it was like a, yeah? P, are you in this house? Are you talking to us right now? Pete, if that was you that just came through on this device and said your name to us, can you can you tell me yes or no? Can you tell me if that was you? Is there anybody else in this house that would like to come through and talk to us? Can you tell us your name? Tell us our name. That almost sound like Amber. Can you repeat that to us? Did you just try to tell us our, your name? Is your name is your name Amber? That was weird. Hurt? Hurt? I don't tell me it's Herschel. Is your name Herschel? Is that the name I just heard? Okay, we're going to move into this room over here. If you're in this room and would like to talk to us, I understand that there's a uh, 
We've been told about somebody in this room that's a protector. Likes to protect a little girl against men. Can you repeat that? It sounds like it was like a, like a, a younger woman's voice. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Are you the younger girl that gets protected in here? Are you really not being protected? Are they are they trying to hurt you? Now's your chance to come through and talk. What's the name of the little girl in here? What's the name of the man in here? It's almost like every time I, I kind of like ask a question that would be like directed towards a man, we get more of a response. I, the first one kind of like said, shut up. Is there anybody still in here with us? We're going to leave this room. If you'd like us to stay, you got to tell us. Is there another part of the house you want us to go to? You want me to stop talking? Is that why you made me tell you something bad? Like, right here, I have like, 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 like pressure, and it was like a distraction feeling. Are you trying to get me to stop talking? Did you just grab my neck? You know, if you just grab my neck, and I, I don't appreciate that very much. Okay, we're going to leave this room. Is there anybody in this room that would like us to stay here and talk to you? We're going to leave this room. There's that, that growling noise again. That's the second time we've caught that growling noise. Yeah, this was right here. All right, who's growling at us? Yeah, I'm actually going to set this now. Okay, we're going to leave this room. Okay, who's the one that's growling at us? Can you give us your name? I've heard that growl twice now. Pete Spencer, are you in this house? We're trying to talk to you. Was that you that came through earlier and said your name? Go ahead and come through again. She was saying earlier that they, the protector protects against men. Uh, I wonder if he's not worried about us because she's, she's standing us. here. So we're gonna have you walk out, okay, and, st and just go off into the other room, and then we're gonna try we're just gonna go us, back in here. and we're gonna go back. Yeah, we're gonna go back into the altar room, and we're gonna sit just with us and see if we can get him to come through. Because now it'll just be men in there. Because that might be, that could be it. it could be that there's, a, there's, she's in there with us, so he's not worried about it. We'll see. So let's go he doesn't feel out. like there's any. He doesn't feel there's any threat because you're you're there. Who's the who would be distress. the protector? Would it be John? Could it be John? John who? The owner, the former owner of the house, that John, one. who's John and Maggie, who sold it to Pete. Right. Who yeah, it could they, be. They may have a little girl. This is a toy. Oh. That's yeah, like, where we were catching the. Uh, with that's a little okay. girl's toy. Right. That is the only one in this area that's a little girl's toy. Yeah. So, what I'm 
we're just wondering if maybe the protector is of the little girl and it could be her parents. I mean, it's possible. Because I don't know the history of the people that sold the house to Pete I don't Spence, know, I don't know any but their names are John and Maggie, and I can't make out the, la the last name on the paperwork, but their name's there, and it says they are husband and wife that are transferring this house to Pete Spence. We'll, we'll ask those names. Yeah. John and Maggie. Yeah, and so you might want to take a look at the document, see if you can make out the last name on that, too. Okay. And there's okay. also an A.J. A. Jones, th who was the recorder. I don't know if he would have anything to do with okay. it. Okay, well, we're going to go off in here. I'm going to go over here, then. And we're going to see. Okay, to anybody who might be in this room, um, I'm holding this device again in my hand. Still got it. And we're here to communicate with you. You have just men in this room now. So I'm going to click this on, and if you would like to get us out, you're going to have to tell us. All right, I'm talking to anybody that's in this room. We've got just the men in here now. We hear you're the protector. You would like us to leave. You got to tell us. You got to tell us to leave. I'm holding this device in my hand. You can tell us to leave through it right now. Is your name John? John, are you the protector? Or is it Pete? Tell me the name of the protector in this house. The man who the man who protects everybody. Maybe AJ? Is your name AJ? We've got just the men hanging out in here now, and we're not going to leave unless you tell us to leave. If you tell us to leave right now, we will walk out of this room. John, Pete, AJ. If any one of you are in here, go ahead and say your name. Who's the name of the woman that owns this place? Can you tell us that? There's another woman that <coughs> there it is again. <coughs> I think it's like right here. Are you, is there someone grabbing on me? It's like scratching. There, there's someone grabbing on me trying to get me to stop talking? Okay, there's another woman that works in this build in this house. And you called her a bitch. Who's the name of the person that did that? That's not very nice of you to call her a bitch. Just felt like something just touched my ear when I said when I said it wasn't nice to call her a bitch. I called her something kind of touched my ear. All right, is there someone in here grabbing on me? If there is, at least give me a name. Can you tell us anything about the attic? Yeah, you want to tell us something about the attic? We're standing right under it. Tell us what's going on with the attic in this place. Are you hiding something up there? Are you hiding up there? Or is there something you want to be found up there?
much of anything. Like, dude, it's really weird. Like, seriously, it, it's, it, it's twice now. It's the exact same feeling in the exact same spot. It's like after I ask something about the protector or the man, or if I start asking about like the, the little girl, like I get like a little, it scratches the point to where like I cough. So, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and shut down this uh, spirit box session right now. Um, we're gonna move on to uh, to something a little more, uh, something a little more. So right now we're gonna end this the spirit box session. Didn't really seem like we caught too many responses out of it. Um, I think there may be a couple. I think in the beginning it literally sounded like we we heard P. We were standing right here and it just sounded like it was like a really long like P. And then so. But uh, so we're going to go ahead and end this spirit box session now and we're going to move on. Okay. So we're going to head into the uh, back into the original part of the house and we're going to thank you. We're going to uh, go ahead and run a REM pod session and see if we can get any uh, responses out of it. We are going to be running two. Um, we're going to be running one in this room and then one in the altar room as well. So we're going to head in here right now. We're going to go ahead and take a seat at the table and see if we can get any responses. So far, we were having some luck earlier when we were uh, setting up. I mean, me and Tony were in here, and we were setting up, and uh, that REM pod kept going off, and then it was just silent for, like, what, like two hours? It had to have been two hours, yeah. Yeah, and then, so we're going to see if we can get anything now. Like I said, we're going to be running two of them. So uh, let's go ahead and get in there and get those set up. So we've got the one. We've got the one sitting on the table already, and then I'm going to go ahead and set one of these back over here in the altar room. This is the one that was in here earlier? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is the one that we were getting the responses from earlier while we were setting up. So, so that was right when we were right when we got here. Yeah, literally as soon as we walked in, like we I set this up immediately and it just started going off. I actually even caught uh, I caught it once earlier. Um, so we'll I'll have to go back on the footage on that. Uh, okay. If uh, someone's in here this device on the table, you were messing with this earlier, the uh, device on the table with the red light on it. If you can go ahead and touch that for me and make these lights go off, all you have to do is come up and just touch it or just go anywhere near it. I also have one back there on the table. If you would like to mess with that one as well. So if anybody's in here, you would like to touch these devices, please do so. You touched this device earlier. You can go ahead and touch it for us now. Or touch that one in the on the back table over there. Pete, if you're in this house, talking to you, Pete Spence, if you are in this house, can you come touch this device for us and let us know you're here? toy up here and see if maybe if there is yeah. a child spirit here Set they it. want to come play with this. Set on the table, yeah. and we'll try to entice that child to come here and touch it. If you like this toy, if you're if there is a little girl in here that needs being protected, if this is your toy, if this is something you like, you can come over and touch it. Alright guys, so just to make a note, this is the toy earlier where we were catching the RF uh, spike off of can't figure out why this toy would be thrown off with a spike like that. Uh, so we're going to see if we can actually use it as a trigger item um, to maybe any child spirit that's in the house. Uh, so we're going to see what happens because that was very weird that we got that, that RF spike. Like off this particular toy earlier. So yes, if you would like to come, if this is your toy, or if you want to come play with this toy, it's sitting right here for you. If you want to go ahead and try to pick that up or play with it? Right on the left hand side of that thing in the other room. Just kind of walk around in there slowly. 
and just kind of pan on the left side. Well, of that. he's got to keep the camera on us. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. So let's go in here. Okay, so you got there's. Yeah, just kind of walk. Let's just kind of walk around through in there really quick and just do the same thing you were just doing, but let's do it right in here real quick. Okay. Okay, we have, a, we have a device sitting on the table in here. If you would like to touch that device for us and make that go off, we'd really appreciate it. It's really quiet in here. Yeah. Guys, it's really quiet in this room. Like, it's, it's different from that room over there. Like, it's really quiet in here. This is this is kind of the feeling that we felt when we first got here. Yeah. It's like you walk into this room and there's just this weird atmosphere that kind of just lays on you. Yeah, this room has a very different feel. It's like not so much like a heavy, heavy feel. What is that? Anybody in here want to communicate with us yet? I'm gonna try to touch this over here. This is the same device that we have sitting out there. All you have to do is come up and touch it, just like that. If you'd like to communicate with us, come touch this device so we know you want you want to communicate. <clears throat> Dude, there's that <clears throat> there's that scratchy feeling in my throat again. Yes, this is okay. I'm starting for that that chill over my hands. Yeah. Again. I'm getting a chill on my back right now. I'm gonna try to put that on that chair. Oh, on the other chair, yeah. Okay, go ahead and touch that device for us. Is there someone touching my back right now? Yeah, I got like a cold chill running up the side of like this side of my back. You know what? And that bear was freaking me out earlier. We just want to communicate. We don't mean anybody any harm. Yeah, we're not here to hurt you. Can you make a noise for us? Tap on something? Can you move something for us? It sounds like we're getting some kind of scratchy noise. And I kind of want to sit here in the corner. Is there someone scratching around over here? Are you trying to move something? Can you maybe can you move one of these uh, one of these items on the table for us? I just heard you scratching around a second ago. Go ahead and move something for us. Make a noise. We know you're in here. We're not here to hurt you, but we're, we're not leaving until you come and talk to us. We know you're in here already. You don't need to be afraid of us. Just come talk to us. Did that just flash? That? Yeah, the night vision? Yeah. We're going to have to check that. Okay, so do you want to take this? No, not yet. We're picking you up on a couple of our devices. Dude, I got that chill on my back again. Are you sure you don't want to talk to us? I'm not catching any draft through the door. It's like it's almost like every time I come over to this spot, this this part of the room, I get this chill in that's on my back. Right here. That's right. Yeah. All right. So the chill that I keep getting a chill on my back right now in this corner of the room. The reason why we came in here is Tony was said to come in here and he had a feeling about this corner and wanted to film it. So and it's funny that every time I get over to this part of the room, I'm just I'm catching a chill on my back. 
So I think what we're going to do is I actually, let's move the REM pod over here. Speaking of that, that REM pod's going off. Are you touching that, that device? Are you, you going for that toy over there? All right, can you touch this one over here on the chair for us? It's still going off. Is it? Yeah. Can you come touch this one on the chair for us now? Please come touch this one. It's still flashing too, yeah. It's not, it's not going off though. Was that you when I started? Are you the one? Are you hiding in this corner? There's the chill again. Like, let's switch spots because I keep getting this chill on my back. Let's switch spots and see if you get it. It's every time I'm in this area. Like, it, and it just comes and goes. Like, it'll, it'll be a chill real quick and then it's gone. Are you, is there someone hiding in this corner? Are you hanging out in this corner over here? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Our device here, I'm going to move it over here. You can touch that device for us. You just hear it? Mm -hmm. Guys, we just got a REM pod response off the device, off the REM pod I just put in the corner after I asked it. And there it goes again. Yes, please touch that device for us. Make that go off. Can you can you move it so you can uh, turn all those lights on for us? I'm gonna switch them out. I'm gonna grab the one from in there. Let's see if it's strong. Yeah. So we're gonna switch out the rim pods right now. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and put this one in the corner. We heard that there's somebody in this room, somebody that is in this room a lot and has showed themselves to people. Okay. Can you go ahead and there it goes. So, so, so somebody is in this corner. If you, if there's somebody in this corner right now, can you stop touching that for me? Can you stop touching that device for me, please? Thank you. So there's clearly someone in there in this corner. This corner. I think we should grab the spirit box. Uh, grab the spirit box again. Do it. Try it. Try it right over here. All right, guys. So we're getting some responses out of the REM pod out of this corner. Um, I believe something is hanging out in this corner. I've been getting cold chills up my back. As soon as we moved the one REM pod over there, it started kind of going off a little bit. So now we switched out the REM pods. And as soon as we did that, it and there's still like, something responding to this. Okay, yeah, and it's flashing right now. So what I did is I went ahead and I grabbed the spirit box, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can try in this corner and get whoever is hanging out in this corner to try to communicate with. See if maybe we can get a name and maybe just find out anything. Whoever's in this corner, we were in here with this device earlier and you can speak to us through this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this on and we'd really like to know who you are if you can tell us your name. Are you the little girl that we heard about? The one that needs to be protected? Okay, can you tell us your name? What's the name of the one in this corner? What is your name? Is that going off the whole time? No, it just started. As soon as we turned it off? As soon as I turned it off, it, it, that started going off. You want me to turn this back on? As soon as I turned this off, you, you made that go off. You want me to turn this back on? You want to try talking now? All right, I'm going to turn it back on for one more minute. 
All right, you got one minute. Tell us your name. It sounds like it just said it was a man who said no. Said no. no. Why don't you want to tell us your name? Do you have bad intentions? You want us to get out of this room? Yep. Yep. You just said yep. Just said yep. Okay. Well, we'll leave this room after you tell me your name. Just say your name to me and we'll leave this room right now. We just asked if you wanted us to leave and you said yep. Well, we'll leave when you tell I want to know who's telling us to get out of this room. Well, that's yeah. one down. That was a pretty uh, pretty distinct scene that you want us to get out. It said, yep. yep. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and leave this out on the table for you. If you would like to play with that at any time, please go ahead and do so. And we're going to go ahead and leave that one back there in the, on that back table over there. So feel free to play with those. And if you want to communicate with us, go ahead and just make these go off like crazy. And we'll come back here and talk to you. So, all right, guys, we're going to end this uh, this rim pod session and spirit box session. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the rim pods out. Uh, we're going to leave this toy out because it seems like there might be something going on with this toy. It was really weird that we got some responses in that back corner over there. So we're going to go ahead and leave these rim pods out and see if they want to mess with them. And we're just going to go ahead and continue moving on with the investigation. something about that corner that I don't understand. All right, guys, so it's getting to be about midnight right now. Um, we're only, literally only about a halfway through this investigation, and uh, Kat is actually going to be leaving us. She's not one of the ones that's staying the night here tonight. So, Kat, mother, thank you for joining us. It's it was been fun. fun. Um, so, we are going to, uh, she's going to take off. We're going to send her out, and then we are actually going to continue with the investigation. Like I said, we're only about halfway through, so we still got uh, quite a ways to go. So, Good night. Good night. Cat mother. Bye. Good night. All right, so we're sitting here just kind of uh, taking a break. We're all just hanging out right now. And I don't know if you guys can hear it. That REM pod is going off in that other room again. Every time we leave that room and we come in here and we're going over some of the equipment or we're, we're getting ready for the next... Uh, next step in the investigation it's like something's messing with us they keep making it's been going off for a good what minute and a half almost two minutes now yeah. and it's going off like crazy but every time we walk back there nothing it shuts off and then we don't get anything so this time we're not walking back there we're not responding to it um we're gonna let it go for a few more minutes and then uh then we're gonna move on to our next step but right now you got to do better than that we're not coming back there right now. Yeah, it's just going off. And we still got it on camera. Yeah, we are catching it on our DVR camera back there right now, but we're just letting it go. Because uh, it's it's every time. We keep getting it, and it's, then... It's still going. Yeah, it's still going right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it on this camera, but we are catching it on the DVR, and we're just letting it go. So we're going to stay here for a few more minutes, and then uh, we'll see where we go from there, but... It's like something's messing with us, though. Something just moved on this table. Yeah. Watch it. As I'm going to walk go back, back there, there, and as soon as I walk back there, it's going to go off. It's going to turn off. It's the minute I walk back there. I know it. I can already see it coming. Move anything. Knock something off the wall. Push me. It's like you're just messing with us now. You keep setting off this device to get us in here, and then when we come in here, nothing.
All right, guys, so what I'm going to do right now, since we're in here, um, I'm going to be pulling out a new piece of equipment I just acquired. Um, some of you may know this. Uh, I've been wanting to use one for a while. This is actually a Paralyte. Uh, what this is, is this is basically a K2 meter in a lantern form. Uh, so it's a lot easier to see. Um, as you can see, it's basically a K2 meter as a lantern. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this on the table and we're going to sit in here for a few minutes and see if we can get the, get them to respond and anybody to respond uh, to us. Keep making keep making the REM pod go off. All right, we got a new piece of equipment in here for you. What is that? Nothing. Something touch you? No, I think it was my tag. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that scared me. Like he, he jumped up real quick like something was going on. <laughs> Piece of equipment in here for you. Piece of equipment in here for you. <laughs> it doesn't help that the REM pod was going off too. Like, <laughs> dude, that scared me. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> okay, so I have a new, I have another piece of equipment here that if you come, can come and touch this and make these lights go off. I really appreciate it. Apparently, you're quite fond of making that one go off. So, why don't you stop messing with us, and uh, <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and why don't you go ahead and touch this one for us? Make the, make this light up for us. Can you go ahead and touch this uh, this light on the table for us? You should be you should know what lanterns are. Why don't you go ahead and use that? Go ahead and grab that for us. Go ahead and grab that light for us. Make that make those lights go off. Light that up for us. Why do we just have a feeling they're gonna mess with us again? And instead of that, they're gonna, gonna make, go they're gonna make this go off like you yeah, know, right, man. I know you're messing with us. You keep making this go off every time we leave the room, and then we come back in here and nothing. You gotta give us something. I mean, unless it is, it is a child, and it's playing with us. I mean, that is possible. That's hundred percent possible. It could be a child, and that's why they're doing. It. They're playing with it, and they're they're enjoying getting watching us, watching the big kids or the or, you know the adults running back and forth. Is that what you're doing? You you just a little kid just uh, messing with us, having fun watching us run back and forth. It says pretty lights on it. Yeah, you can have. You know, let's go ahead and put it right here on the bear. What about the bear? You want to play with that? Can you can you light that up for us? Okay, I got something else for you. I got a little toy. All right. What is it? Because I'm down at your level now? Maybe we're dealing with a kid, dude. Yeah. As soon as I got down. Mm -hmm. You want us to sit on the floor with you? We'll sit on the floor with you if you want us to. Can you make Can you make those lights go off and we'll sit down with you? I'll tell you what. I got a little ball you can play with. I'm gonna go ahead and set it right here. It's got some lights on it. If you want to, uh, if you want to go ahead and roll that for us and make that light up. Tell you what, I'm gonna sit on the floor. I'm gonna sit down here with you. Can you uh, can you roll that ball to me? We're we're here to play with you. we're here to play now. I think that might be what we're dealing with. This might be like like a, a kid that hangs out in this corner. Can you roll that ball to me, please? Can you try to roll it? Can you roll it towards Tony? You, 
you've got three, uh, three, three things here you can play with. They have lights on them. You can make them light up, make them flash. You roll that ball to me. If, if you roll that little ball right there, a bunch of little lights will turn on. You saw it. enjoying messing with us yes whoever it is they're messing with us grab the bear what's that grab the bear grab the bear yeah do something with it I don't know anything okay I'm gonna set the bear right here can you push the bear over You really do like making that one go off, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know, if you touch that one, if you touch, if you touch it, you can make little lights go off. That'll flash too. All these, all these things we've set out for you, they'll all like make, they'll all flash. They have flashing lights on them. You can make it light up in here real quick. But you have to, you have to touch these devices. You have to roll that ball for us. Mm -hmm. See, that's all you have to do. Just go ahead and roll that for it. Just roll it around. All right. Yeah. We've got, there we go. We've got three things on the table that you can mess with and make them light up. Go ahead and make one of those light up. Preferably not that middle one. You've been playing with that one a bit too much. <laughs> roll that ball off the table for me. Can you roll it my way? I'll catch it. I got my hands right here. I'll catch it. Maybe, maybe we're not dealing with a kid. If you're not a kid, is it making you mad that I'm referring to you as a kid? If that's the case, go ahead and light this device up right here with that pink light on it. Otherwise, I'm going to keep calling you a kid because I, I honestly think that's what you are. If you're not a kid, make that lantern light up. If you are a kid, go ahead and roll the ball for me. Okay, go ahead and play with the one in the middle. Make that go off. We're not getting nothing. Blue stop now. Yeah. Something is messing with us. It's making me think it's a kid. It's playing games with us. But then it's making me think like it's it's something else in the house that's just like trying to annoy us so we'll leave. You want us to leave? Is that what it is? I think. Okay, we have these three devices on this table. You can make them light up for us. We really appreciate it. Let us know you're in here. Is that you tapping in the corner? Can you go ahead and move something over there? You want to move anything on the shelves for us?
All this stuff you can move in here. You want to move something? You want to try to scare us out of here? We're not scared. <clears throat> I would like to be scared. Is there more than one person in here trying to talk to us? If so, can you hit one of these objects on the table for us? All we need is one person. Pete, are you in here? I kind of thought we'd be hearing from you tonight. I thought you would be messing with us. Or oh, the protector that we've heard about? You were kind of messing with us earlier. We brought a lot of stuff in that you can communicate with. And if you're the one that's been uh, messing with all of it, go ahead and keep messing with it. Go ahead and make one of these light up for us right in front of us. Let us know you're here. That's all we want to see. We just want to know you're here. Go ahead and touch any one of these devices on the table for us. Just let us know you're here right now. Yeah. Uh, the show. Okay. We're going to bring this toy down again. If there's something about this toy you like, why don't you go ahead and uh, grab it for us? Come on. Kind of, you're kind of making me feel like, uh, like you're not here, like uh, we're, we're wasting our time. Maybe you're not Pete. Are you a little girl? Maybe a young lady? Maybe Maggie? If you're a young lady or a a girl, can you hit this over here for us? Huh. It's quiet right now. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take these away for now. do a run through the house with our thermal imager and see if we can come up with any uh, any figures or see what's going on. I think they're messing with us now. Maybe we'll be able to catch them on the thermal cam. So let's give that a shot.
go ahead and sit in that chair for us. Somebody camera shy? Don't want to be on the camera? Can you show yourself for us? Maybe just move something? Maybe one of these strings on the fan? Maybe these flowers. sitting in that chair? You're all, can you stand up for us? All right, so right now we're catching, um, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna be putting the image from the thermal cam at the bottom of the screen, but right now we are catching a weird image. Um, it almost looks like someone's sitting in the chair. I am aware there is a chair, it's at the altar, and it, 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 there's a chair sitting right in the middle, but like for, for a second there, we're, well there it is again. It's almost like we can see legs, like somebody is sitting there. Can you stand up for us? It really looks like that's a set of legs. Yeah. Like someone's sitting in the chair. you moving the flowers can you move them a little more make a little more noise please move it. go ahead and move those flowers for us someone's standing there. Or not standing. It looks like someone's sitting there. Yeah, it looks like someone's sitting there. You can almost see an arm right here. Yeah, you can see the legs. It looks like someone's just kind of sitting there like they're staring at us. 
Or who are you sitting? Over, are you sitting in that chair staring at us? You're just watching us just stand here trying to figure out if you're there. Like it, it's like there's, I was catching an image on the thermal camera, and it looks like somebody, like it was cold, and like someone is sitting in that chair. And then as we were sitting there, I was capturing pictures of it on the uh, on the thermal imager. It sounded like the flowers on the altar got moved. Like that's we both heard it at the same time. What do you got? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this thermal imager now. We haven't really caught anything else on it, so we're just gonna go ahead and shut it down. What happens if someone goes and sits in the chair? I don't want to find out. <laughs> I'll sit in it. Here, hold that one. All right, I'm going to come sit in this chair. You want me to leave? You want me to leave or you don't want me sitting in this chair? Go ahead and light this up for me. And I don't mean just make it flash real quick. I mean really light it up. Make it go red. Tell me to get out of this chair. Oh, it got real cold right here. Are you over there standing by Tony? Is it because I took your chair? You want me to leave? Go ahead and light this up. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it.